All right, good morning. morning. All right, so uh, it would seem that the College of Cardinals had voted for a new pope. Yeah. And uh, it turned out that he was an Irish pope, not an Italian pope. You know, most of the College of Cardinals are Italian, and they really like it when there's an Italian pope. So this new Irish pope is in office for mm, a month, a little more, and it's discovered that he has a very, very bad heart ailment, yeah, and that he's going to need a transplant. And so the College of Cardinals meets, and they get this idea, you know, it would be really great if this Irish pope had an Italian heart. So uh, there's going to be a big upcoming day where the Pope blesses everybody in St. Peter's Square. And what they decide is uh, because everybody loves the Pope so much, they will all want to be a donor for the Pope to get a new heart. And so when the Pope comes out on the balcony to deliver his blessing, they decide they will release one feather. And whoever this feather lands on that will be the person who gets to give their heart to the Pope. And so they explain this to the crowd, and the crowd starts to chant, Popa, Popa, take my heart. Popa, Popa, take my heart. And it's this overwhelming wave throughout the crowd of people's just love and devotion for the Pope. And then one of the, um, the cardinals raises up the feather. He's on the balcony next to the Pope, and he blows the feather out over the crowd. And you hear the crowd go, Popa, Popa, take of my heart. <sighs> Popa, Popa, take of my heart. <sighs> so, I'm going to talk today about the principle of responsibility. <laughs> we teach a principle of responsibility in the science of mind. And you know, the bigger your life gets, what you find out is the more you have to actually be responsible for. And so this is about self-responsibility. This is not about blame. So when I talk about responsibility, please, please, please don't substitute in your head, well, this is just blame. Because nothing gets healed, nothing gets grown, nothing gets better with blame. Okay? But responsibility, that's different. Because responsibility says, okay, I was involved. Somehow, somewhere, consciously, unconsciously, subconsciously, I had something to do with this, okay? It may have just been that I lent my consciousness to such an experience. It may have been that I did not guard my consciousness well and fill it with light and love and truth, and therefore I was susceptible to such an experience. But, um, you know, if you, if you justify your reasons and excuses, the universe says, okay, they're yours. You get to keep them. You get to keep them, but you also get to not be healed or grown or move forward. So what we take responsibility for can change. What we take responsibility for, we can heal. What we take responsibility for, we can grow in those areas. And you know, as beings of consciousness, we have free will. We have choice. And we were given this free will, and I believe we were given this choice in order to evolve at our own rate. You know, the universe does not hurry us. It says, well, you want to stay with that experience for, what, another six months, a year, ten? Okay. If you're not done with it, you can stay with that. Right? So why does God, so what people often ask is, you know, why does God let people behave so badly? Well, this is why. Because we have free will, because we have choice, because every soul is in a process of its own spiritual evolution. You know, imagine if we had never let children learn, you know, uh, about making their own choices and the consequences of their choices. And I know that starts very young for people with children. You know, a big part of our own growth and conscious expansion in life is this thing called choice. You know, that we have talked at times about uh, this idea of having an intention. You know, and each choice is a choice of our intention, I think. That every time we choose to speak, every time we choose to act, every time uh, we entertain a belief, that's an intention we have that's actually being expressed. And so certainly, we all have many aspects to this human part of our being, right? You know, that we can be loving and we can be not so loving. And we can be patient and impatient and compassionate and not so much. We can be selfish, we can be giving, we can be bitter, on and on and on and on, right? So it's good to be aware that we have all of these aspects to, to our being. Hmm? So uh, 
there was uh, a young brave in a Native American tribe, and he was talking with, with the elders of the tribe, and in particular his chief, and he said, you know, he said, um, I, I don't really know how to proceed forward in, in life because I feel like there are two ways I could go. You know, and the chief says to him, well, you know, it's like this. Every one of us, we have two dogs that live inside of us. Yeah. And one is a beautiful, kind, loyal, and wonderful companion. And one is mean and ferocious and a killer. And they're always doing battle. And the brave says to the chief, well, which one wins? And the chief looks at him and says, whichever one you feed the most. So this really, to me, says this is about what we give our attention to. So if I'm giving my attention to the negative, the negative's going to win. And if I'm giving myself over to the positive, to what's life-affirming, to what's good in people, in life, then that's what wins. So the strongest part within us is what wins. We want to be the same, uh, we want that same strongest part of us, you know, I think that's, that's the best part of us, right? And it's difficult to choose, I think, um, our intentions consciously until we become aware of the, that there are these different aspects of who we are. And we want to make our conscious decisions, we want to make choices, we want to set our intentions from this place of the best within, uh, from the best that's within us, from that place that's actually going to feed us, from that place that will foster us and grow us more. This is why we say we want life to go um, one way, you know, we say, oh, I want it to be like this, I want it to be like this, and yet our experience is so often very, very different than that. You know, I thought I was ready for, for, for this past painful pattern of experience to go away. I, I thought I was done with it. Why does it keep coming back? Well, I believe uh, you know, the God part of us, the spirit within us, desires to experience and express wholeness. You know, but the other parts may not, right? They are not necessarily as responsible as that God part of us. They, they might be very, very strong because we have a history of feeding those parts of ourselves very, very well. So this thinking about responsibility really guides, I think, our choices. Because remember, every time we choose, we are creating some kind of karma, right? And so I'm responsible if, if I'm the one who gets angry, I will create more of that kind of karma. Right? Everybody understands that. So many people resist the idea of responsibility, uh, and, and people's intentions largely, I find, are unconscious. They say, well, I, I can't help it. Um, you know, uh, this person, they just make me so angry when I talk to them. Really? They made you angry? I mean, come on. Does this not have anything to do with your response? See, because that's one of the distinctions we make. Reacting is unconscious, but responding has more consciousness in it. There's some level of choice. You know, so I, I'm going to say, well, I can't help it when you made me angry. They had no clear intention to be compassionate and loving, right? And when people said, you know, and did whatever they said and did to us, I understand, you know, they did not have the intention to go uh, uh, inward and pray first rather than just behave however they behaved out in the world. Do you see what I mean here? So, so this is being big spiritually, I think. Accepting responsibility is consciously choosing the experience that we are in the process of creating. Right? So I'm responsible for the choices that I make that shape my reality. Right? And so what part of me do I want to choose from? I could choose from that place of the highest and best within me, or I could choose from that place that's small and petty and snarky sometimes. You know, we, we all understand, right? But a responsible choice takes into account the consequences of the choice. So this is pure science of mind. Making a responsible choice takes into account the consequences of that choice. So ask yourself, what will my choice in this situation produce? Do I really want to create that? Am I ready to accept all of the consequences for that particular choice? So if, if we were like the brave uh, in the story, what part of me do I want to cultivate? You know, what part of me do I want to release? Spiritually, I think we gain or lose power 
according to the choices that we are making on an ongoing basis. That some choices we make actually just fill us with power, and some choices we make, you can feel the power, the energy, the life force just drain out of your body. To which we should be saying to ourselves, OK, that was a bad choice. Remember that. Next time, I will not make that choice. See, because I believe we want our choices to be aligned with the highest and best part of us. That seems to me to be when life works really, really well, when the choices we're making are are aligned with the highest and best within us. You know, and there's, um, there is certainly lots of temptation uh, not to, yeah? Always, always, right? So temptation is the, it's like the fork in the road. You know, one goes this way, one goes that way, right? Which way do I go? Well, one way will be a reflection of my best self. One way will be a reflection of my less than best self. One way will create good karma. One way will create more not so good karma. Karma. Um, so if I consider my options, I can evolve without creating bad karma, right? But if I think of myself as someone who who cannot overcome temptation, oh, you know, who was it? Wasn't it Oscar Wilde who said, "I can resist anything except temptation," right? <laughs> and uh, and I have been that person. I am absolutely that person. So I'm saying I choose to be that because. That's like saying, I choose to be irresponsible. I can't resist, you know, I lack the power. So what stands between us and, and a different life, I think, or a more evolved life, a more loving, abundant life, are matters of responsible choices. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm, will I be more enlightened if I make this choice? That's a good thing to ask ourselves. Will I be more light-filled? If I choose this or if I choose this, will I, what's a more loving choice to make? Is this more loving or is this? What's a more peaceful choice to make? This or this? What's a more wholesome choice for me today at this point in my life? What will contribute to the wholeness within me more? This or this? Okay. So don't underestimate the power of consciousness. You know, when we make conscious choices, uh, you know, we are filled with strength, I think, and, and the small us dissolves a little bit more. When we make conscious choices, we're giving more sway to that presence of spirit within us and less to that human personality self that's just always kind of whiny, you know, I want this, I want that, I want, you know. So it's really good news that we cannot not evolve. Isn't that wonderful? You know, we're, we're here, our, we, our soul is going to evolve. Everything in the universe evolves. You know, the question is, is which way you know, do we choose to learn as we evolve? I can learn through joy. I can learn through pain. I can learn through hardship. I can learn through ease and grace. I think expansion of every good thing in our life will come because of internal expansion first. Right? So, so often as students of science of mind, we want some area of our life out here in the world to get better, to get bigger, to prosper in a greater way. And yes, absolutely, that is available to us. I believe that with all my heart. However, that external expansion will always be the reflection of some internal expansion, or it will not last. See, if we just try to have bigger out here without becoming bigger in here, this is, you may get it for a while, but then it will disappear. And then people say, well, I thought I had it. What happened? Why didn't it last? These principles don't work. And it's like, no, you don't work. I'm sorry, you know? And I wonder why people don't come back. You know, I say things like that, right? <laughs> but, you know, when we notice we're stuck out here in the world, well, that's just a reflection that I'm stuck somewhere in here, in me. There's something stuck in my thinking. There's something stuck in my heart. There's something stuck in my way of being in the world that is keeping me from moving forward and expanding. If I want more expansion out here in the world, you know, I have to make it my responsibility to expand in here. Why? Because spirit is found in here. You know, I've got to get quiet. I've got to focus on my internal experience. You know, in a sense, everyone, everyone, even the people we are sure are not on the path, are on the path. If you just, if you just look at it, if we would just consider, everybody on earth is on the path. Now, they may not even know it yet, but they're on the path. So, so I would say, well, how, how could I say such a thing? How do I know that? Because everyone is going, growing, and everyone is going through stuff. Right? I mean, is there anybody not going through stuff? Do we know anybody? You know, when you call and say, hey, how are you this week? And they say, oh, I'm fine. I'm not going through anything. I have never had a person say that to me <laughs> in my entire life. Nobody's ever, no, I have nothing going on. Nothing, no, no, no issues, nothing like that. 
I think, I think everyone, everyone is growing through stuff, right? So the whole earth is being invited, I think, to go, to a, to, to go deeper, to, to a more responsible place. And the path leads us to being the biggest, the best, and the most loving that we can be, I think. So there, and certainly, certainly, you know, we would not say that this is easy. Um, there are potholes along the way. There are road bumps where the dark spots in our consciousness are actually in the process of coming up to be healed, right? So you know belief in God is good. Absolutely, we would all agree with that, you know, and I would hate to go through life without it, but knowledge of God is even better than belief. The, that is the knowledge of, of, of the love that is in our life. A really powerful person is a person who has a tremendous capacity to love. If we look, and people think, oh, if, I, if I'm just loving, I'm going to be a doormat. I don't think that's true. Because you're loving doesn't mean you're not going to have boundaries. Because you're loving doesn't mean you're not going to accomplish things. I mean, very loving people um, have accomplished tremendous things in the world that we live in. A really powerful person is a person who has a tremendous, tremendous capacity to love. So this would be a great thing to take personal responsibility for. In every situation that I'm in, Regardless of what it looks like out here, I'm here to add a little love into this situation. I'm here to put a little more light, a little more understanding, a little more peace. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I even say anything out loud. Because sometimes, you know, we're in a situation and the best thing we can do is just keep it buttoned up. Not say a word, but let the predominant energy, because all minds are connected. We teach that. Because, so let the predominant energy that emanates from us be an energy of peace and an energy of love and an energy of healing. There's a, um, a wonderful thing in A Course in Miracles that says, you know, you think if you understood people, then you could love them, right? And it's the other way around. If you love people, then you'll understand them. And so I like to play this game when I'm in line at the grocery store because that is a place where I get hooked a lot. Um, <laughs> I, I do, it, it, which, which is funny because I grew up in the grocery business. My dad always had a grocery store. We all worked in grocery stores. I worked in a grocery store all through college. And so I've, I have done my time in grocery stores, and you think I would pretty much be healed around that. <laughs> and, um, and I'm not. I'm not. Uh, uh, so I will be in line, and somebody will, in fact, I was in line, uh, okay, yesterday, just yesterday, very recently. And, um, and, and I... Um, I could feel myself becoming a different person. A different person? Mm, a person I was acquainted with very well in the past, um, who I try not to bring to the party very much anymore. But boy, all of a sudden, that person was up and out and, and it's like, OK, 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 just, just, just try to love them. Just try to love this person. Just try to send them love, send them love, send them love. And inevitably, and this has happened to me again and again and again, I hear them say something that totally turns my witchy, judgy self around completely. You know, the, so I, I, I heard, I heard, the, heard the woman in front of me talking to the cashier, and she said something, and I just sort of melted. It's like, oh. And I'm, and, and I'm aware enough to know that, okay, I couldn't have heard that if I hadn't been willing to say, okay, I need to be more loving here. I need to be more compassionate here. Right? So think about it. When, when we're truly filled with love, you know, our fear is gone. And, and actually having no fear is a really powerful place to be. Well, well how, how do I get there? You know, well, I, that would mean I have to truly, truly be filled with love on, on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And we say, well, can't, it, it can't possibly be that easy. Well, who said it was easy? Come on. You know how hard it is to try and be filled with love every moment of the day? But it is, but it is an, an art, and like much art, part of what makes it really good is that it looks really easy when people are good at it. You know, when we see somebody who's acting and, and they do a great job, they do it so effortlessly, right? You know, and we say, oh my, now we don't know how hard they worked to make it look that effortless. And I think this is the same kind of thing. We work to be a loving consciousness in the world so that wherever we go, we add a little more light and a little more love and a little more peace to every situation, whether we're in line at the grocery store or we're driving on the 101 and the 405. You know, it's about us being a light wherever we are. You know, so have you ever been um, like to a museum or a show and said, I could have done that? You know, you see something and you go, 
well, that's just a canvas that's all white with a black stripe in it. I mean, what's the, you know, I, I could have done that. It's like, yes, but you didn't. And they did. And that's why they're in the museum, hanging there all the time. And you paid 20 bucks to get in. You know, that's the difference. It's, 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 well, I could have done that, but you didn't. You didn't. They did. They did. You know, it's, it's funny. When ideas come to us, I, I often feel like, you know, God drops in the idea. And if we don't act on it, somebody else will. We know that. So how many times have you been to an intersection in a neighborhood and said, oh, my God, you know what they need here? They really need a pizza place here. Pizza would be so good here. Or, or they need a Chinese restaurant in this neighborhood. Right? And, and then a couple of months go by, you're driving through the same intersection, and you see there's a pizza parlor there. Oh, and a Chinese restaurant. They really took your idea seriously. You know, and you think, God, I, I could have opened that pizza place, but you didn't. They did. They did. You know, so if God gives you an idea and you don't run with it, somebody else will. Hmm? Is it, Something I, I, um, I observe is that great beings have a purpose long before the world recognizes them. You know? That these great beings that have lived on the planet, they know what they're here to do. And they just keep going about doing it. So do you think we could possibly get closer to God and not be more loving? I'll let you sit on that for a second there. Could I possibly get closer to God while not being more loving? I don't think that's possible. You, I, we want our life to be bigger, and that means we have to be responsible for being more loving in the world. Let's try that this week. Let's pray. So, thanks. We turn our attention inward for a moment, recognizing that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit, that there is a divine consciousness of which each and every one of us, we are a part and so in this awareness of our connection with God, the good, the greater, I also know that we're all connected on the unseen side of life. All minds and hearts are joined. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we have an awakening, a realization around personal responsibility. And we look at those areas of our life where we are willing to take responsibility because in those areas we can grow and we can heal and we can expand and we can evolve beyond anything we have ever known thus far. Because the good of God that's everywhere and available within us right now is absolutely infinite. God says yes when we say yes. So we include in our prayer our family members, our friends and loved ones, our parents and children, whoever we're holding near and dear today. We see them in our mind's eye and we hold them in the energy of our heart, knowing that they are blessed, that they are surrounded and filled with God's light and love, and perfect healing is taking place. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So think of all the things that you've heard about taking place in the world this week, and just let love be your intention, to love and bless and heal, to love and bless and heal. Put that energy, emanate that from your heart, from your consciousness, into all of those situations and all people involved. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that everyone gets to be raised up. And so with an open and a gracious and a full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is so. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.